How do you fetch JSON in React? I'm going to be showing you how to fetch plain old JSON in React and I'm using Next.js. Now there's a lot of use cases where most APIs will send you JSON. You just want to be able to get that information and display it on a page. And that's what we're going to be doing today. I remember when I first started, I was like, how do you get all this JSON data on the page? We're going to be doing this in three different ways. We're going to be using fetch and we're going to be doing using fetch with two different options using fetch use it with dot then and awaiting it because it's a callback and promise. And then we're going to be using option number two, which is creating an asynchronous function and doing the same thing using fetch. And then third, we're going to be using get server side props with Next.js. All right, so right here, I just have a boilerplate Next.js. Again, this will work inside of React. This will work with regular old JavaScript, but for except the get server side props, which we'll use Next.js. I use Next.js in my favorite framework, but basically we're just using React. So first of all, what I do want to have is a use effect. So in fetch, um, you, you need to be fetching a lot of times inside of a use effect so that on first mount, it goes and fetches the data because the data won't be ready until it's until it arrives. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import use effect and import um, use state. Um, I'm going to go ahead and be creating a use effect right here. So we're going to say use effect. All right. And then we're going to give it the empty array, which will give it the um, on first mount. You could put your fetch code right here, but I'm going to put it in a separate function, but it's basically doing the same thing. So I'm just going to put it in a function called function pull JSON for lack of better words, you pull whatever you want. And I'm just going to leave it as return for now, nothing. And I'm going to on first mount, we're going to say pull JSON, right? All right, so we got here pull JSON. So now we're just gonna go ahead and use fetch to actually pull something from a URL. Well, first, let me actually put this URL inside of a const. So I'm just gonna give it its own variable const. All right, so I'm just stuffing that inside of a variable. Now we're going to say fetch the URL, okay? Nothing's really happening right now. So I got no errors and nothing's going on, which is good. Let me get rid of the return. Okay, so we've six without any errors, which is good. We're fetching now. These are callbacks and promises, so we have to wait for it to come back. So we're going to use the dot then method, and then we're going to say the response, grab that response, and the response is an open stream, but it's not in JSON. So we're going to use the JSON method and just say, hey, put this inside of some JSON. I'm waiting now for the response. And now we're waiting for the JSON to finish converting. So call this whatever you want. Some people say result. It's whatever you want. I'm just going to say response data. So when that response data kicks in, when that JSON finishes, um, I want to start doing something with that data. So I believe we can console log this if I'm right. And yes, we have all, everything coming through. So this is basically the sure enough basic way of pulling data from JSON, displaying it. But right now it's console log. We can't do anything with console log. We need to display it on the page. So what I'm going to do is map over this data using dot map and then put it inside of a variable and then display that in a use state in a state. So we're going to say I'm going to call this display data. By the way, we should be changing this data, so we have to give it let, not const. So we're going to say let display data, just give it a default variable. And then let me hide this console log. And then we have to map over this. So basically, I am mapping over the response data. And you could call it to do. So we're basically pulling in every single, um, we're mapping over it, and every single thing is called to do. I know that this is a to do list. Um, so I'm just calling it to do, but you can call this element or whatever you want. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and return. I want to return like say for a P tag, right? So let's just save this right now. So I'm basically mapping over this, putting it inside of display data, returning, and then on each element, just like a loop, putting a P tag. Now I want to display the data. I already know if I look at the console log, I already know what this is. So it is um, each array has a title, user ID, ID title. I'm just going to take the title to represent blog posts or something like that. So we're going to say now we can just go like this um, to do, right? Because that's the name of the element to do. And we're going to call it title. So great. Now, whenever you map over things in React, you need you get a key error. Everything needs to have a unique key. So because of this, JSON has an ID. You can go ahead and give it a unique ID. So key equals, and you're just going to give it the to do dot 
what is from there, which is the ID. So now we have this display data, but we can't just display this because if we go down, right, let's just, let's actually put this here. Um, there's nothing there because the data is still, there's a callback and promise and it's waiting for the data. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to put it inside of some state so that when the state is updated, it mounts itself. So what we're going to do here is say const, I'm going to give it something called show post use state. We'll give it empty and empty. Um, you know, nothing's there yet. Let's change this instead of display data to the show post state, right? Which is empty. So now we're going to say this display data to instead of console logging, we should put this inside of state. So we're going to take all of this loop, this element here, we're going to place it here and there we have it. Yes. Let me close out the console. Um, and now we have, we're looping over all of the titles. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Now what we're going to do is I want to show you the second option. So let's label this option one, hide all this for now and we will leave everything else. Okay. So I'm going to show you option two. In this case, what we want to use asynchronous function so that we wait and then continue without using dot then dot. First, what we want to do is go ahead and create a function, pull JSON again. I'm going to go ahead and show this now, this pull JSON, this use effect. So it's doing nothing. Now we have to make this an asynchronous function because when we're fetching, there's callbacks and promises. So we have to wait. And that's the point of the dot then. So we're going to call this async. Okay. So now it's an asynchronous function, which will basically we'll have to wait line by line as things get executed. So we're going to say const response, basically putting this fetch inside of a, a variable. So we're going to say await because you always have to wait. I'm going to say fetch API URL. All right. So we have, we're fetching, we're doing the same thing, but we're just awaiting it. Now we want to go ahead and convert that into JSON and await that conversion. So we want to, I'm going to label this variable response data, which I use, and we're going to wait the response in JSON. I'm going to say, so put this in JSON and now await. So now as this is finishing, we're waiting that to be finished. Now we have everything inside of response data. So technically, if I did this correct, if we console log this, yes, we have all the objects. So same thing, but look in much in a much cleaner, right? Instead of all of this stuff. Well, we do have some more stuff here, but instead of the dot dance, the dot dance is hard to read. As long as you have it in an asynchronous function and you put a wait, simple way of such an easy way of fetching JSON data. So now we can do the same thing. You can basically copy and paste it. So not to, to save some time and it's the same basic. So same thing, response that data, nothing's different here. Let's just see if it all just oh, display data. Oh, because I took off that let display data, which was a thing and it could stay there. And there we are. Option two is running. So again, what we're doing here is we got an asynchronous function. Um, we have the data. Once we have the data, all we're doing is mapping over it, putting it inside a variable. And then we are taking that display data, putting it inside of a, a state. And then we are displaying the show posts and that's it. Now I want to show you a third last option and this is next.js specific it uses fetch but it basically instead of you having to await things so what we're going to do is we're going to hide this as option two we won't need anything else for the third option um and let's hide show posts we're going to use get server side props which basically does its own thing we're just going to go ahead and write this and it'll go all the way to the bottom underneath everything so what we're doing is we are basically exporting a new function sorry function and then it should be like this. So we're exporting an async function, get server set props. And then we're doing the same thing. We're actually const fetching, you know, the same thing. So it's, it's pretty much doing the asynchronous function that we just coded above. But the difference is it's putting it inside of um, its own like props. So you're returning and you're returning props like in react and then you're going to send that back to the same components and now we go above and it would be data so we're passing the data as a prop but you know what i'll leave this let display data alone and now we will actually just the same thing i'm copying and pasting the same content in every single you know function we've mapped over the object of arrays that came back we have it but now we're not doing the response data came from right we saw those inside we're changing it to what is coming from here which get service side props is sending us the data actually in this case we could just go ahead and display data and it just works 
That is a third beautiful way that Next.js does. Now, the difference here, as you see, we didn't have to put inside state, right? When we tried this and the other ones, there was an error because the data didn't arrive yet. The difference here is that Next.js won't load this com, won't load the page until it pulls. So if this page loads, you can be guaranteed that that data has already come back before things have happened. So in this case, it came in as data as a prop. So that's it, guys. I, I don't keep going, but there's these are three easy ways to simply pull data and loop over the data and display it on the page. Fetch with the fetch and then using dot then, but then you have to make sure you put it in state. Second way is you convert that into an asynchronous function. And then the third thing is using the get server side props, which goes all the way to the bottom. It's doing the fetching, returning the data, sending it back up as props, and then you are just looping over that data, displaying it on the page. So guys, I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, drop in the comments below. If you want any more Next.js tutorials, um, front end, full stack, web development tutorials, just go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.